Next question is from Twin Sanity Fitness. What is your advice for someone who wants to start online coaching but has no experience? All right, so I'm going to go first specific, okay? We work with a company called NCI Coaching, and they are, in, in my opinion, the best in the business at taking coaches and, and getting them to the point where they're successful online. And success as defined by getting their clients good results, but also it's one of the only certifications that focuses on getting these coaches to build their business. That's another yeah. part of being an effective coach is you got to be good with your clients, which is a big part of it. Obviously, be good trainer or coach, get people results, do a great job there. But there's a business side too. And that business side, you don't learn from almost any certification. NCI does both. Now, I'm going to be more general. Yeah. Okay, here's more general advice. Go be a trainer at a big box gym for a year before you try doing online coaching. If you're new, if you're brand new, I think you'll learn, you'll become so much better online if you train people in person first for at least a year. Because I believe online coaching, especially when it comes to fitness, like exercise, is harder than being in person. In person, I can give, I can watch you move, I can see cues. I, if I don't have that experience and I'm texting with someone and they're mm -hmm. explaining how an exercise feels, I'm going to be clueless. But if I've trained people a hundred times and they say, man, it's really weird when I do uh, cable rows, I feel kind of pain in my lower back. And I know, oh, tighten your abs while you're pulling the weight because I've trained people in person so much and I've done that cue to help them. So that's more general. Do some personal training in person at a big box gym. They'll provide you with opportunities. It's easier to get clients there. Do that for a little while, then go online. No, that's why I'm glad that we've sort of been a part of this and, and been a part of these conversations with these coaches and trainers because this question comes up a lot. And a lot of them are brand new to the space. And I do agree, you know, the physical part of it is hard to replicate. But, you know, the part of that process is being able to figure out what the right questions are to ask and to be predictive with that in terms of like staying ahead of your client's needs and being able to kind of, you know, sharpen it down to what the, the bare essentials are for, for them to focus on so you're not overwhelming them with everything. And I think that, you know, with NCI, they, they've built in like all of these things in terms of like systems for, for them to kind of help these coaches figure out, I need to create these systems so that way, you know, my client feels like everything is under control. Like, uh, you know, I, at that way, it's somewhat predictive uh, and they can kind of replicate that with, with other um, and individualize it and customize it, but you need a framework there to be yeah. able to work off of first. And I so said, I think that's one of the hardest parts to create first when you're moving online, because uh, if you don't have that experience right away, uh, it's really difficult to, to figure all that out. Well, I'm going to add one more shameless plug, which is uh, you guys plugged NCI. Well, uh, we have a mentorship with NCI. So if, and is it, Doug, is it mindpumpnci.com or is it ncimindpump.com? Mindpumpnci.com. So mindpumpnci.com. And you have the, you have the opportunity to meet with us, Zoom with us, each one of us once a week. So every Wednesday, and it's all trainers. So these are all trainers and coaches, both in-person and virtual coaches that are asking these types of questions. So uh, if you're not, and it's it, unbelievably cheap for what you get. Uh, so under $100 a month for you to be able to have access to all four of us, including Jason and his team. Um, I think there's tremendous value in there and nothing will ever beat in person, hands on training one on one. But if you're limited on how much of that you can do, uh, this is, in my opinion, the next best thing. Or if you have the ability to do both in conjunction would be great, would be going through the mentorship, learning from NCI. And then in addition to that, also getting some hands on practice so you can apply the knowledge and information that you're hearing from us. Yeah. You know, Adam, I want to ask you a question because I know you managed trainers for a long time, as, as, as did I. At what point did you realize that you would produce more successful trainers by teaching them the business rather than just teaching them to be better trainers? Almost instantly. It was something that, and this is truly what, what made me a good fitness manager and even a good trainer. I actually talked about this uh, recently on NCI. They were asking, they asked, one of the questions was, Adam, how did you program when you first started as a trainer? And I said, that's the wrong question to ask me <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> because it's not going to be good advice. I wasn't a good trainer. I wasn't... Uh, the, the nutrition and uh, the biomechanics, all that stuff came later. That came later with experience, lots of national certifications. Uh, did, I, did that come full circle for me? What I was really good at the very beginning was I recognized that 
everybody was talking about uh, nutrition, physiology, uh, program design. That's where all the energy was flowing. If you heard about a good coach, it was about how well he programmed right. or how well he knew nutrition. It wasn't that this guy like operated a sick business. And I just come from a different background and family and things that I'm into. I'm more into the business side. And I was seeking that and I couldn't find it anywhere. And one of the first things I started to do with my staff right out the gates as soon as I started was teaching them how to actually analyze their business by figuring out their show percentage, their clo their closing percentage, the average dollar how they to sell. Present, how to sell. Yeah. So how to forecast uh, okay, so you say you want to make eight thousand dollars this month. Well, okay, yeah. let, let's Here's just how not, many appointments you need. Yes, to book let's not just throw like a fairy tale yeah. number out there. Let, let's actually break down like how many people do you need to book? How many people are you going to see? At what percentage are you going to close? At what dollar amount to actually have some so some real strategy around doing that? When I taught my trainers this, and that I was this was where I had a lot of success was being you know, later on. The other stuff came, but yeah, that was early. It, it's it, first of all, it's a, it's got to be a given that you need to be a, a good trainer or work on being a good trainer. So mm -hmm. obviously, you don't want to be a crappy trainer because I don't care what else you do. Great, yeah, you're just gonna sell garbage at you're, that point. Yeah, you're gonna suck. It's not gonna. So you got to be a great trainer. But you know, I you know what I used to do with my trainers. I used to trick them because <laughs> a lot of trainers they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear. I just want to train people. I don't yeah. want to. I don't care yeah. about business. If I just train people good, and they, they're just they, for whatever reason, oftentimes fitness professionals, especially when they're early. They're like anti-business. All I want to do is help people. And so what I used to do is I used to trick them. I would do weekly trainings with my trainers. And the title of it would be how to activate your glutes more when you're doing your squats or how to correct, you know, common ways to correct shoulder impingement. And they'd come in and I would teach them exercises and techniques for the first 30 minutes. And then the back 30 minutes was I would talk about the stuff that you said, because now I have them in front of me. And it was the most valuable stuff. Yeah. That was the stuff that really was valuable because it learned, they taught, they learned how to become better at what they did, better business, which by the way, bleeds into making you a better trainer. And look, I don't care how much passion you have. If you can't support yourself with your business, you're not going right. to be able to do it. Um, and again, one of the reasons why we chose to work with NCI is they, they do place some focus on that. So you're not, bl you're not walking into this new career, you know, totally blind. And that's, that's a big deal. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.